Hello everyone, I'm Little McGriddle, and before I get started having my own place, it's okay, I like it, but I really miss my man, miss Michael a lot. Not being able to talk to him is, well, it's not fun. So if you're watching this, I love you so much, and I miss you a lot. Please don't leave me. I love you. Okay, I really miss you. Anyway, without further ado, this is Juniper's Knot. is another visual novel game, and I don't really know much about the game. But it looked cool and interesting, so um, why not? Why the heck not play it? And this game is a total of, I think the game time of this is 30 minutes or so, so. Tinkle, 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 tinkle. That's lovely. This looks nice. Oh, much of these stone walls and floors have weathered into dirt and dust. Revealing the foundation. Oh, gross. How terrible. Much of the ceiling, too, has crumbled to the ground, layering flecks and bits. Below me now is such tired soil. Tired. Tired soil. Ha <laughs> ha! There isn't much to do here but burn dead leaves and wait. Watch the smoke rise, curl up fresh, and tickle the inside of your nose. Dull as bones, it is. But what can I do? I'm stuck. Some might say cursed. I'd rather say bound. What is this place? What are you bound to? I don't like to think of very much about it. Okay, nice fire. We got a nice fire going. Oh, feel the heat from that fire. It feels so nice. I knew that a small fire started, taking up a few embers and loam into my palm. It's this glow that stirs me, reminds me that my heart is still beating. So... Fire reminds you that your heart's still beating? No, it's the, it's the glow of the fire. Alright. I bring scorched earth close to my face, shut my eyes and breathe it in. I taste it and spit. Why would you taste it? That's gross, you weirdo. It's barren. Okay. I'm probably going to wait here forever. What are you waiting for? And why are you here forever? Hello, what? What are you? I mean, who are you? You look like an elf, but you have big ass horns. You're a horny elf. <sighs> Moving on. Hmm. There's an unnatural rustling not far off. West? West, I? What is it, who? Another here? My eyes sharpen and my ears perk up. I feel my heart thumping into my throat. Oh boy. Should I be forward? Give a call? Would that work? Cry out. Plead. Help! Help! Damsel. A fool sort of lie. Would that work? No. Whoa. Whoa. I'm listening. Whatever it is, it's very busy about here. Noise is tumbling rough from old doorways. Chests wide open, shops and homes are explored. A scavenger then? Someone found this place? Tut, hmm, hearing these sounds is just odd. I shouldn't be odd, but it is strange. I should remember such sounds. Someone's in the kitchen making a racket. Hey, while you're in there, can you make me a sandwich? I'm quite hungry. Oh, the noise is getting closer? Is it? I imagine this? No, no, it's surely in the manor now. Poking around the kitchen and lounge? I decide on a chance that it'll find its way to the ballroom to stand. I take a good posture and wait this new company. And to my surprise, it's a boy. He shows up at the door within the next minute. A boy? A man? What kind of thing is this again? 
He's carrying a pack and has a bottle on his waist. Maybe he's a traveler then? Doesn't look like he's noticed me yet. He's just wandered in, stare adrift. Ah, hi. Ooh. After a few steps, I catch his eye. He moves a little closer to look at me in the face. And then some more to see my feet. He stops there. He's staring now and doing nothing more. Come here. As if realizing something, he stiffens. His heart beats loud in the air. I need your help, so come on. Oh, come here. He doesn't bend. What is he up to? What does he think he... What does he think this is? I speak again, this time with a little bite. What the hell are you waiting for, tit? Oh. Oh, have I been rude? Have I been rude? Oh well, you are cordially invited to move your dumb legs. But the first conversational words I've spoken in centuries, they could have been worse. He shakes his- he shakes with fear and stands back. Uh, a fiend. Slow are you? What does it matter? What are you pissing your trousers for? Get over here. Ah, uh, no way. You'll eat my soul. Allah. A smile cracks along my face. Ha! Ha ha ha! Ha! Your soul? Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. When was it last that I laughed like this? I grin. I grin so brightly, watch him chuckling while he shrinks back a little and a little more. Uh, uh, and now a person? Person, you're just perfect. A jester. Won't you lend an ear? Uh, for I eat your soul, huh? At my laughter, he glares, stealing himself. He answers me. You're not catching me, demon. Got that? I've read the stories. I'm tired, but I ain't stupid. Am I that famous? Mercy, I left a mark. You know what I mean? Hell, I really don't. Friend, fiends, devils, demons, all of y'all. I know how it is. And how is it? They're all foul, and you try to trick people. Trick you? Trick. Ha! <laughs> oh. Oh, I really just can't believe it. What's happened in the years I've been gone? And what if I'm not trying to trick you, person? What if I just want to hear you? Just want to hear me? What the hell? Like, what's it you've read, lad? Do tell, I'd love to hear a story. I'm a little bored. I think I'll just leave. If you turn tail on a bloodthirsty, wicked fiend. Look, I know something dirty when I see it. You ain't fooling no one. Ah, <laughs> he's so precious. All right, all right, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you, I, like all us fiends, devils, demons, am plainly trying to win your extravagant soul through my dastardly wit. <sighs> Honest and true, I'm a rook. But please, please, at least tell me what you've read. Why the hell do you want to listen to me so much? Because I am bored and your voice, ah, your voice, I swoon. Okay. Bah. Horse feathers. Horses don't have feathers. I really do want to listen. Would you be so kind? Ah, he's genuinely considerate. Such a delight. I do want to hear him. In the meantime, I look over at him. I look him over for a little more finely. He's got a fair face, but through the fabric of his shirt, I can see that he is muscled. A surprise. Even the soldier boy seemed a little bit lean back in the days I rode at Merrill. I wonder what he does. What is he does? He smells like an animal, in the most pleasant way that can be said. It's quite good. Also, he has the faintest scent of watercress about him, mingled with black oil. What a peculiar lad. Ha. Ah. Hmm. I'd really better not stick around. I guess I can tell you some things, though, uh, yeah, I guess I can tell you. As long as you stay put, you hear? What's keeping me from you is more powerful than I care to challenge, person. Yeah, right, whatever. Here's a story. One from a book I read a lot when I was little. <laughs> oh, 
Pardon, pardon. I find it very hard to think of you any littler. Oh. Quiet. There was a cobbler in White Acre who had nothing to eat. He was poorer than dirt, and he didn't have a girl, and it made him real sore. He didn't have a girl? A dame. A sweetheart. He didn't have a wife. Ah, continue. While he was walking down an alley, he met this man. He had a, on a dark cloak with a hood that covered his eyes, and the cobbler couldn't make heads or tails of it. He stopped and asked the cloaked man if he'd, if he'd like his shoes worked on. The, that's stupid. Why would he do that? Because he needed all the work he could get. Well, he should have gone around ruining shoes if, if what he needed was work. The cloaked man said he wasn't wearing shoes, but he could use a new pair. But obviously the cobbler's a cobbler, so he doesn't make shoes. He tells him that. And the cloaked man says, actually, I could really use some new shoes. The cobbler looks at him weird and says he can get them if the guy is sick. And the cloaked man says, would you do that? I'd do something for you then. And the cobbler says, like what? And the cloaked man says, perhaps anything. He leans forward darkly as he says this. I smirk at the action. Now, I know what you're thinking. I've heard this one before, and I know how it goes. Well, you don't. Because the cobbler says, perhaps not. And he walks away. How exciting. But here's the thing. When he's walking, he notices the alley's longer than usual. He doesn't think about it, though. He thinks he's just tired from work and keeps walking. But while he's walking, he sees another man in a cloak. He stops as the man if he could use his shoes getting worked on. And the cloaked man says he doesn't have any shoes. The cobbler stops and looks at him and says he'd better get moving. The cloaked man says he could really use some new shoes. And while he's moving, you know, I nod. He keeps running into this man in a cloak, but he can't find the end of the alley. Actually, every time it takes longer and longer till he sees the man in the cloak. On the eighth time, he runs into the man. He stops and asks, what's the game? And the cloaked man looks at him with yellow eyes. Says he could really use some new shoes. Oh my god. For what? The cobbler says. I don't know, the cloaked man says. Perhaps anything. What do you want? The cobbler knows exactly what he wants, but fiends have yellow eyes and he knows a fiend. Tch, nonsense. I actually sighed hearing that. So what you're telling me if the story is anything good to adhere to is that I might have already trapped you. Dunno, I don't think you did. Why not? He shrugs. I don't think you did. Hmm. I really must say, your manner of storytelling is queer. What? It's strange. Oh, I don't know. It's just very strange to my ears. I guess. How's your story end? The cobbler gets desperate and makes a pact with the fiend to get new shoes. By the next day, the fiend will give him gold for him to do that. Ah, <clears throat> this ends well. So the fiend gives him the gold, but he doesn't make it. The fiend traps him in the alley so he can't leave. His soul is taken, and he's damned. The fiend eats his soul and leaves the alley for a farm. A uh, farm? Yeah, I know. I snort. That's comedy. I think it's supposed to mean something, but eh. Point is, don't get caught up with fiends no matter what. You're getting caught up with the fiend right now. Well, you don't feel right. I- what? He shakes his head. Nothing. I look at him try to figure him out. Figure out his opinions and his story. In the time he's told it, he seems to have taken another idea of me. I'm not sure why that is, either. I appreciate you telling me that story. Don't mention it. You're so opaque. You still wary of me? Yeah, a little. I frown. Well, do you want me to tell you another story? The unsolicited offer throws me. Is he really asking? But no, I, if I'm too eager, I can't ask for that. No. I pause. No, I'm fine. If you say so. I'm gonna go now. Go. Yeah. I have to go, so... I'm going. Ah. He begins to turn around. Oh. Stay, please stay. Please, I won't take your soul. Honest, I won't.
And then, like an idiot, I move my hand out, reaching for him with a singular one. Oh, shit. I move past the second meter, past the circle's edge with my fingers, and withdraw a start as they set a fire. Dropping to my knees, I scream, I cry out and howl, clutching the flames and smothering them. Tears crawl down my face and I snarl with pain. I shut my eyes and moan. I hear him step a bit closer. You're stuck here? Looking up at him from the ground, I feel my teeth chattering. Oh no, I know why I want him to stay. Yes, I know. To rend him. But, cause as if, as if just wanting wasn't, wanting wasn't, I just, as if it just wasn't so funny enough that vines sweat down from the walls and grass is borne through stones so close just outside this putrid circle. Now there's a human breathing for me. Comedy. Everywhere but here but near to me, to my desolating blood. These years have damned me, cut and clawed beneath my skin. Scars invisible but nevertheless blighting. I hate it! I hate, hate it so much. I hate the feeling it gives me to my heart, and the strength it takes in kind. I hate it. My flesh heats and I look away from him. Looking into his eyes enrages me. How long have you been there? Long enough to beg, long enough, you hear? Too long I've been in this stinking pile. It doesn't matter to you. I want to know. Well, I don't want to tell, I? Ugh, sorry, miss. Miss? I take a look at my clicking, stuttering hand, my sight still blurred with tears. It's sizzling. Small blazes dance between the fingers. I take my tongue to it, soothing the burns. You're a bold one, I, calling me a flap. A wha? Uh, no, no, you're, you're no flapper, lady. It, it meant, it means something different now. Miss is just what you're supposed to call older ladies, out of respect. Lapping the flames in the back of my hand, I glance at him. That right? Are you okay? I suck my ring finger and squint. What's that? All right, fine. Is that okay, all right? <sighs> all right. I, I, I am a fiend, yes, heal fast. Though I can still feel it snap and pop in the joints. I whistle cool air through my ditches and take myself from the ground. Are you going to stay? I, uh, I could. Ah, oh, thank you. I'm actually lost right now. Ah, lost, is it? Lost. Ha, that's a sweet irony. Don't look so addled, person. The irony is quite obvious here, isn't it? Ah, sorry about that. I'm back. My leg fell asleep. It was rather weird. <laughs> like, my whole leg just, like, got paralyzed and I couldn't even lift my foot because it was... I don't know what happened, it was weird. Anyway, moving on. Stuck. I laugh again, but he doesn't find it funny. He doesn't seem to find it much of anything at all. I quit it, wiping away a figurative tear. Ha! Huh. Oh, oh, I know this place. So intimately I had red in your face. He jerks and gives his head a shake. Hey, if, if you, hmm? Ah, uh, uh. If you know where this is, do you know where's more? Ah, so earnest. Don't know what more is. I know Moors. Moors? I Moors. Moors, you follow? I don't follow. I, I don't know what those are. My, my. Ain't this a right dizzy jig we're dancing? Time's making fools of us both, huh? He looks a his looks a bit hazy, as though he's having a hard time keeping his eyes fresh. I turn my head silently. What's more, person? Where I was born. Live. A town? A new town? City. Think it's been there for a while. That right? He doesn't speak, and I glance over just quickly enough to catch him at the end of nodding. Did you know this place was more for a time? Miss, I don't know. What is that? It is a dead place, a wet place. I too was born in a moor. Can't your stomach read a mood? Bleeding hell, I was about to tell a tale. Sorry. You're hungry, is it? Starving. 
Us fiends here, we only eat souls, and only for pleasure. Quit joking. Joking. Hey, you got any food? What are you blithering on about now? I look like I got food. I don't got any food, idiot. However, here. I thrust out my hands just before the barrier palms up. Give me the chestnuts in your pack. I smell them. He hesitates. Why? So I can gobble them up. What do you think? I'll cook them for you. They're not long from the branch of the ground, it smells like. You haven't cooked them, and nor have you eaten them. You prefer the taste of them cooked. He nods slowly. I twitch my fingers, waiting. Is there something you want uh, for this? Your company for the morning till noon. That's it? I nod. Okay, deal. Whoa, God. No, you shouldn't have done that. Oh, God. We're doomed. His words spoken like a knell. It resonates deeply, echoing and shakes ash from the walls. Startled, the boy covers his mouth. Deal, was it? Hmm. <laughs> I smile. Here. Did I just... I, you made a pact. Hmm. Shaking his head, he sighs. Wordlessly, carefully, he takes out of his pack and opens it up. Withdrawing a bushel of nuts in two hands, he moves forward. I look down at him, still waiting. And with steady movements, he brings his hands to mine. He holds my gaze, and I don't move at all. But I do think... I think, wait, couldn't I just... Couldn't I just, you know... Quickly just... My hands tense with an end to the thought. <laughs> he drops the heap into my palms, my fingers curl around it. Again, I turn my lips. Seeing this, he hops back. Give me a moment. I take all but one into my left hand, holding the last between my right thumb and forefinger. Opening my mouth, I bring it between my teeth and puncture it with one of my fangs. I bite through the shell, making a rough cut from one end to the other, and take it out. Observing the inner flesh of it, I spit out the shreds. Satisfied, I go on to carve a second, third, fourth, and so on. When I finish, I hold the chestnuts aloft and make a hearth of my hand. This will take a while, purse, but not a song. But Pardon my English. My face is full of mucus. It's so annoying. <laughs> Might we talk some? Uh, sure. Then have a seat. Where would we leave off before your stomach's so rudely interrupted? He sits, chin on his knees, and high is afflated. More something? Ah, uh, yes. I'll tell you a story about Moors and return it for yours. Though, rather than a story, a chat be nice, I save you a story for a bit later. What do you want to talk about? Morse. Oh, right. My moor, eh? Mine? That's, there really isn't much to say, come to think of it. You said you were born there? I, like all fiends, I was born in waste. You read about us, I. About how we make barren anywhere we stay and unconsciously drain life from earth for our sustenance. Hmm. Hmm. Pallid land and calignous loft, air crawling low and damp with miasma, the pith of plants choked sturdily. I feel my face twist into a scowl. Sounds, uh... It sounds hideous, I know, because it is. Did you grow up there? Ha, huh, a neat question. Aye. Aye, I did. Had a mother and father always got me wondering, is this where I'll be when I get old? A bloody moor? Ha, huh. guess not. He left it then? Left it from many places. What was it like growing up there? Tedious, maybe. I shouldn't have brought this up at all, I. You just don't want to talk about it? That's okay. No, no, it's a matter of okay. There's just not much of anything to talk about. It's all very colorless. What about yours? My what? Your moor. Oh, it's not really anything special. Just your typical city. Typical to me is not the same to you. Well, it's big, loud, streets are packed with folks, lots of smoke and brick. My mom and pop ran a farm near there because they're crazy. Oh, is that where your scent's from? My, my scent? You smell like herbs and horses. It's quite adorable. You also smell like black oil, but I'm not sure where from. City's pretty modern. I have to lift canisters of oil from place to place every Wednesday. Oh, tough. He nods. Ha, very tough. Hey, knock it off, will ya? I do hard work. 
He kind of slurs his sentence, but nevertheless determined to appear strong. I believe you. For your noble, strong efforts, I think it's time for your story. You ready? He shrugs. I clear my throat and loosen up my shoulders somewhat, poising my fire hand dramatically. Hmm? Did you know that stars sometimes act as rain in the night sky? You mean like a meteor shower? Hush. I've heard of it, but I've never seen it. Well, I've heard of it and know it because I've seen it. Imagine this. Thousands, thousands of lights and they all bleed along the cold cerulean mirror above. Slowly. Very slowly. Follow? They're so very slow that as they make the long stretch out above you, you hardly notice their drag. It is an impeccable slowness. Imagine it. He nods very slowly and nods in another way, drifting into my memory. And flash. <coughs> Jeez. I flare the fire in my hand, the chestnuts wax, splitting, crackling, jumps, light catching in his eyes. Flash, haha, <laughs> flash, flash. With each of these words, I stoke the flames. They lick up and dance wildly. Each single brilliant streak cuts through the lights, in independent and free. And then it dies. The magic in my palm fades and sighs. It pulses, fades, pulses, fades. His eyes glaze over, like this, like a heart's last beating. Death is quick to these stars. Straying my eyes in the light, had they so turned, I hadn't noticed. I gaze upon the boy. Say, a person that's sorrowful to you? Huh? He thinks of an answer. It is. There isn't the right answer, person. You don't have to consider like there is one. You think it's sorrowful? I do. That's interesting. Truly interesting. Mm. I end the fire, leaving the chestnuts to cool. I blow on them and breathe on them, ears twitching. These are done now. I hold them out to him. My end of the bargain's met, and you know what? I'll do you a favor. I'll go ahead and roast the rest of your chestnuts in my fire. Here. I motion to the dead leaves. I'll do this for free. No, for no deal. All that's left now for you to stay. <laughs> Squinting, he waits a little, but soon enough crawls forward on his hands and calves, his pack in tow. He stops at the edge of the circle and takes the fruit from my hand. He looks at me, wearing a kind of ugly expression. What? Settling onto his rear, he keeps looking at me, but a bit less ugly. He seems to be wondering something. Eventually, he looks at the nuts in his hands, instead his face softening. He shells one and pops it into his mouth. His face flushes naturally, chews a little. He pushes his back. He pushes his pack into the circle with his foot, shifts back a few feet, and speaks. Which part of that was the story, miss? Well, look at that. You weren't entirely daft. I take up the bag from the ground, shake it a little. It doesn't smell like there's anything more chestnuts in there. I open it up and check. Sure enough, finding the things in ex excess. Some of the birds still on. Some still green. I toss those ones. I still rummage through it just in case there might be something of interest. There's not. Twas a preamble, twas. There's a story to it for certes. I told you I've seen this. Blinking, he nods. With a hollow sound, I crack one of the chestnuts apart in my mouth. Oh, good. The fire is back. It's nice and warm. I was getting a little bit cold. Thank you. I grab the fire at my feet and drop it in there. No more flashy tricks now. As I reiterate these actions, I speak to the boy. I was not alone with those stars then. I was with another. Miss. Dropping another another fire, I watch as it fall. My eyes lose some of their color. She was fair, young, and human. A perfect miss. Such a charming girl. We would dance together and sing. Press close when unseen. <sighs> I was fascinated with her. I think and so when she'd gotten melancholy, I brought her from town to those stars. I had the ache in my knees, knew the eventide would be crying, and I had figured the beauty of it would settle her. The boy constricts his brow, chewing somewhat sadly. Oh, not to worry, not to worry, it did, it did. He swallows. I've never understood the custom of man. I've always been free thinking and never bound to thoughts of others. My actions that night, no, my actions altogether, none took too kindly to it when she returned. What happened? What happened? Well, well, after I took her back to town, she was plowed and beaten and beaten and beaten and plowed and beaten and beaten until she could not move or breathe. The boy stares and at his hand held stiff only so near his parted lips. 
I buried her under the sky where I last saw her smiling. He closes his mouth into a frown. A century later, I returned to her spot and found an olive tree grown there. Oh. It was the sickest thing, gnarled and twisted it was. Oh. Furious, I raised the entire plant, its trunk, its bark, its branches and leaves. I scorched its roots. What have torn out the roots, though, refrained to not disturb her. Yet, at last I'd seen it remain alive, born fruit and uglier than before. Isn't that the most wonderful story one can tell? No! Ha. Huh. I doubt the last of chestnuts into the leaves. Didn't you mess up the guys who did it? <clears throat> mess up? You're a fiend! You didn't eat them? I didn't eat them. What happened to them doesn't matter to the story. I want to know. I don't want to tell. Uh, seriously, miss? You know when kids in the neighborhood mess with my kid brothers? I beat their faces in with a stick. <coughs> Pardon me. That's what love is. It's taking care of your mates. Love? That's what you figure from this tale that I fancied her? Well, obviously. It's my story, person, not yours. Come off it. It is an old story, and it is only a story. Stop. What? Man. He chucks his shell in his hand against the wall at his side. His expression is sour. Fine. I was just entertaining you as I cooked. That's stupid. Bollocks. I don't want to hear that from your fool arse. Well, it's stupid. It's stupid. Forget it. What? What's this? You starting? Your stone's dropping now? Drop him any further, I'll tear him out. Tear out your tongue. Two here, don't start with me. <clears throat> the boy freezes, hand hovering over his last chestnut. I'll rip your legs off, understand? Don't start with me. Last thing you need to be worrying over is your soul. Since I'll rend your limbless if you start with me. And there won't be anything to be holding that soul at all. You start with me, I'll kill you. Oh boy. We clear, person? Yeah, we... we mm -hmm. I chuckle. You're a cute thing, aren't you? Quailing, so tender. I can't move from here, person. You know that. Quivering, he speaks up. It, it, it just sounded pretty real. Did it? The boy lets out a loud sigh, shaking as it leaves him. Still vibrating with fear, he fumbles opening his last nut. There looks to still be bits of shell on the fruit, which is not noticed until then it's in his mouth. He frowns a bitter frown and calms down somewhat now distracted by the taste some of these are finished mind i don't i nod at the fire can't can toss them to you if you'd like if you're still scared nah i'm not he rocks his head i'm fine but i'm pretty tired could you toss them anyway i i surely could also shall but only if you agree to stay with me till sunset it's noon already it is i sit down myself lounging across from him he stares at his vision slowly, and jumping and trying to focus. Eventually, he squints, loathing his eye on me. Um, didn't you say you'd do it for free? Not this person. I said I'd cook these, and I am. He froze his brow and frowns. <sighs> Here we go again. Fine, I'll stay with you. Deal. The ballroom rattles at the sound. He isn't surprised by it. I smile again. So is that what you are? Tired? Y yeah. I pick up a chestnut and throw it to him and catches it somewhat dazedly. How long have you been gone from your moor, person? I don't know, two days? I throw him another. Oh, isn't that a long time? No. It's a joke. Laugh. Oh, I don't want- If I laugh, it's basically like, be like me laughing at you. Ha! Huh. Answering with a greater joke instead of simply laughing. You really are a jester. A greater joke? I send one more his way. My existence. My tip- Predicament and existence together are the greatest joke in all history. I know this and I've missed half of it. Stop. Such a soft lad. I tilt my head and regard him. I keep leafing through my head book for the memory of another like you, but I'm finding nothing. And I have so many memories, did you know? So many, so many travels, delights, regrets. A boy shouldn't be so soft. The world's so rough, it'll shape him ugly. Languidly breathing, the boy eases into his arms a little more. Or it was. It was a rough place. If you don't know Moors, <clears throat> if you don't know Moors, maybe this world's also soft now. It explained you. He blinks. 
where I was raised in Memoir, that was quite rough. You know why I laughed earlier when you'd mentioned souls? You know why I joke of souls? He blinks. So many of us fiends are so obsessive over souls. It's just extraordinary souls, not remarkable ones, like the way yours feels. Have to look for those mature, spirited humans, their souls heavy with character and experience. He closes. <coughs> Excuse me. A newborn soul, for example, won't do anything for you. It is special, though, yes. A newborn soul is quite pure. Quite pure, really. His back rise. <coughs> <coughs> Holy crap, my voice is starting to really give away now. Paxena. Pax, uh, no? Exquisite. I chuck a chestnut at his hair. It bounces off into the ground. He doesn't even flinch. I look into the fire. I gaze into the fire. The fire. These stupid things inside it. Piss. These stupid things. For a flash of a moment, I consider turning the ash, but doing so would break my pact. No, it wouldn't. I still won't. I would rather burn this thing. This boy. Blasted. Should have grabbed him while he was at the edge. Wouldn't it have been so simple? Or do I need his agreement to exchange his life for mine from the circle? Am I forgetting? Am I forgetting the conditions? The boy would be damned for rekindling his hopes in me. Pressing my hands into his face, angry, roughly, I glare at him through parted fingers. I breathe out. If I could just lunge out from here and take him, I'd do it. I would. I growl. My body still feels the sensation of when I last forced myself through the barrier. The searing into my marrow at the purging of my eyes, and still I would. I'd still lunge out from here. I bloody well do it thrice to get out of this blighted circle. Why didn't I grab him before? He was at the edge. Why didn't you pull him in? Take him! I've forgotten so much. Oh god. God, cry to heaven. What? Is this what it was like having passions? I want to die. I wanted to leave, but not any more of this passion. Passion? I want to die. I'd bite my tongue again, burst blood and drown in myself. Nails in my wrists tearing and dig and tug and pull out my bleeding throat again to... Aha! Aha! Whining silence every day, eh? What's, what's a day? Two days, he said. What are days, huh? What are months? What are years? I've been here centuries. What is it longer? Did even centuries? Oh. Quiet settles in, and the wind dashes the leaves. Scraping leaves, scrapping leaves, scrape, howl, raindrops falling again, again. Embers in my hand, smoke. Sometimes I scream just to hear a voice again. Hey, what happened to my life? My jaw is quaking, my ears are warm. I wish you hadn't come here. Taking my hands from my face, I look at this peaceful. Peaceful, he's so peaceful, isn't he? Peaceful little. I'm not saying that word. Wake up! I throw another chestnut out of missing. Wake up! Another and another. See me, Kerr? See me? This body? It does not grant the bloody piece of sleep. I take up a handful and toss them. I haven't slept a minute. Bastard son of a slut bitch, two pence poor. I haven't slept a second. I have always, always been awake. Two days, you miserable wretch. Had I only been here two days, I'd drink a pub dry. Damn you, you hear? When you're dead, I'll find and spit you on your grave. I'll, I'll plant an olive tree there, you rat bastard. I throw and throw and throw, missing every single one. I hate you. Huh. Am I sobbing now? A fiend sobbing? Huh. Why? I drop my arms to the ground, crying in shakes. For the life of me, I can't remember a time ever crying. Oh, wow. Is... What's going on now? Is this the end? No, it isn't. Hmm? I'm feeling dizzy. I always feel dizzy when I'm waking up. My mouth's dry, too. It's pretty awful. I smack my lips and rub my eyes. I'm still kind of tired. Why was I tired? Ma. Oh, yeah. I got lost along the way to Dale's. Told Ma I didn't need that horse. He's so dumb. I would have been better just walking alone. 
Spooked by a dang partridge. Seriously, it must be bolted out half a mile before bucking me off. I open my eyes and it looks like fog. I rub them again and notice that lady from before is sitting in front of me. Is she asleep? Miss, you asleep? No. Oh, I just figured since her eyes were closed and all, I can't sleep. I look at her weird and flinch. Something rolled out of my hair. It drops onto the ground. Looks like a shell. Oh, it's one of chestnuts? Why are these in my hair? I ruffle up the top of my skull, finding two more nuts on a burr. Whoa, did she throw these at me? I look at her and arch an eyebrow. Her cheeks are wet, her nose is red, and her ears are low. She looks like one... She looks like one of my kid brothers after falling off a curb. I can't really think of what to tell her. Maybe I'll just say what I always say. Did you do something bad? Tell me the truth. Piss off. Yikes. She's in that mood again. Oh, she's in a mood. She's in a big mood. <laughs> Ugh. Hey, give me a second here. Um... Listen, if you got mad, cause I, what did I just say? She says like a fact instead of a question, I freeze up. Piss off. What'd I do? I thought I was being nice. Oh, you want me out of here? She keeps staring at the floor. I'm a little scared now. What time is it? It doesn't look like sunset. It's not sundown yet. I don't think I can leave. But the d deals leave. If I mess up the leave. What am I supposed to do? I don't want to leave. If I mess up a deal with a fiend, I'm going to hell. Or is it worse? Oh man, if it's worse. I, I can't just walk out. Baby, if she... You're kidding. Whoops, didn't want to say that. Good. She was quiet. See, my eyes are shaking. Look at her leaf pile. Because there aren't any chestnuts in it. The deal is she had to toss chestnuts to me. And she did that, sort of. I'm out of luck here. I can't leave, lady. It's lady now? Sorry. God. Leave. I want you to be leaving. Walking out of here. Go and be damned, villain. I look at her. I'm biting my teeth together. My heart's going wild. Burn in hell, dog. It's where you belong with all the blasted foul creatures of your ilk. Calm the hell down. She picks up her head from her arms and glares at me. J -j Just calm down, alright? Calm down already. You really are an idiot. Well, well, you're crazy. Why the heck are you mad at me? Why do you even talk to me, lady? What do you want? You're lonely, right? That's it, right? She starts standing up. Well, I'm not going to let her look that far down on me. I'm standing up, too. I've even stepped up to her. I ain't letting her get the better of me. I ain't got no problem scrapping with you, lady. I'll knock your block off. You just swore against my family, and I ain't going to stand for that, all right? Of course, I'm quaking in my boots while I say this. Oh, I'm shaking in my expensive leather boots. No, I swore against your race. I gulp and frown. Your entire miserable, sin-hearted race. You know what I'd do if I got out of this circle? She steps forward, I step back. Yes or no? No. She leans forward for what I guess is the barrier. I can feel your breathing on my face. It's cold and warm. Kill. A whole lot of them. Kill the men, kill the women, kill the babies, lasses and lads like you. To lads like you, I'll dive my hands into their guts, wrench out their innards string by string, and set them on fire. I, I, I'm crying a little. I'm sorry, okay? I don't know what happened to you. I just wanted to know and be nice and... She leans back, standing up straight and breathes out. I swear I see flames coming out of her mouth. Airy. Are you scared? I nod fast. Why? I, I don't... I can't touch you, see? Oh, Jesus. All of a sudden, he pushes her hand towards my face. My eyes widen, my whole body locks up. What am I seeing? I am trapped before here. Her skin is burning off in a bright yellow glow. I can see her muscles charred black, turning inside out. Fire is blazing all over her hand. There's white in there. Her bones. I can't watch. Watch! I turn back from her turning away. Your blood's evaporating. She grimaces and tears up, tears up fill the sides of her eyes. One drops, rolling down her cheek, and her hand shoots back toward her like it's spring-loaded. I can't leave, understand? You follow sod for brains? She holds up the twisty stump sticking to her wrist. This, right here, this is what I've known too long. Her hand starts coming back together, the melted parts spitting, and the bones getting covered back up. There's this popping noise with everything. 
I go green in the face. I can't kill your people. I want to, but I won't be able to leave here, follow. Ooh. Why are you trapped there? Would you believe me if I said it was a punishment? If I said it was an accident, an unjust imprisonment? Whatever I say, whatever you believe, doesn't matter. I was trapped here before the world even had a concept of your more. I was trapped here long, long, long ago and so for reasons that no longer matter. I, I don't think you're speaking honest with me. How's that? Told you before you need to calm the hell down. How? I saw... Hold my fists tight. How did you get out of there? I just can't believe what I'm saying. Ugh, me either. And I'm still gonna say it. She shakes her head. You've lost it. I shake my head. Nah, I still got it. I know what I just asked you. Tell me how you got out of there. If you haven't lost it, you never had it in the first place. I suspected as much. You're touched, aren't you? Look, I got no idea what you're saying, but I'm still thinking straight and dropping your G's. Shut your trap already. Hush and listen, you rude little pest. Shut my trap. You know what you're saying. Remember what you're talking to. I just think that I didn't just mess them up, huh? I did not just mess up the men who raped her. Oh gosh. I bore my nails hot into their eyes and tore off their faces. What? And that's not all that I did. When I first saw her lying there, body warm only from the bodies of others and eyes with no spark in them, I set the den where she died to flame. I came upon all who lived in her town and murdered them. I torched their homes and pulled the ribs from their chests, crushed their heads, ugh, snapped their bones, stripped off their flesh. If I could torment them, I did it. And in case you're wondering where, you're all the same to me. I killed all kinds of you, one kind. Human, sex, age. I didn't pay any mind when I slew them. Holy shit. Soon they gathered at the center of the town where I had first caught sight of her as if to mock me. So I melted them all into the earth, slowly. On the night that she died, I erased that talent from records. All my fighting spirits gone. Why'd you tell me that? You asked. I didn't... You didn't have to tell me all the... The whole story. You're right, I didn't. But I didn't... You wanna know? What the hell is wrong with you? I'm a fiend. Holy no, that's bull. Is that why you got put up here? No. Really? Yes. Holy shit. I've done many things in my life. Things some find admirable and others some find despicable. I put a curse on a family for all their generations, saved a gaggle of slaves from the tyranny of their fellow man. I've ruined a marriage and I've restored another, slaughtered a town and rescued a child. I've done so many things. And of all those I've mentioned, not a one of them is the reason I'm here. You forgot? Oh no, I remember quite clearly, but as I said, the reason no longer matters. I just don't get it. You wanted me to save you, right? I swear that's what you wanted. When you're telling me all these mixed up things, and what the heck am I supposed to think? What the heck do you want? You, gone. I breathe through my nose and close my eyes. Nah, nah, there's no way. I shake my head again. You've got to be lying to me. I think all complicated, sure, but I know when someone's lying to me. Why the heck are you lying to me? I know you don't want me to leave. What happened to you? I look at her eyes. How long have you been in there? I don't know. I don't know anymore. You don't know? That's what I said, I. What the hell's up with that? That can't be right. All fiends got this knack for knowing the hour exactly, the second. It's famous, so what the hell does it mean if they lose it? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, how much did you love that girl? I, I hear something clear in her throat. She doesn't look like she wants to say, shut up. I, I feel bad for her. This is goddamn weird, but it's like, she's so sad. Everything about this lady is sad. I mean it. She's so damn miserable and pathetic. She's so... really don't know how long you've been in there? Yes. I think you've been in there for long enough, but I don't think you really want to kill anyone. And you're a fool. Quiet, I've had enough of that joke. Tell me how to save you. I reach out to her and grab her hand. The hand that got screwed up and it's healed now. I hold on to it. Come on. She stares at me. She looks at my hand, holds it with both of hers, and squeezes. She locks her eyes with me. I need to be switched with another life. That's the only way for me to leave. Put on my manliest face. I'm not going to switch with you. Listen. I keep her from saying anything else. I'm going to find another way, alright? What the hell could you do? 
I'll plant something in your place. Nothing can grow here. I am a fiend. I? That damn right. How am I gonna... I shake my head. Doesn't matter. That land's gonna be fine once you're out, right? At least that's what I think. That's what I've read. Well, you just gotta believe in me. I look up and finally notice that the sun is gone. If you don't want me to leave anymore, I can feel that. She's really holding on tight. But believe in me. Let me go and I'll save you. She looks at her hands again. She cuts into mine with her nail. Ow! I wince. Dang, no, come on, don't do this. I look at her face, she's still staring at my hand. Let me go. Come on, she wouldn't, right? Don't, don't pull me. Stop pulling me. I'm trying to calm down in my heart. I'm trying not to lose it. But when it's hard, when she's bringing my arm a little bit closer and a little bit more. Come on, come on, please. Trust me. She digs her nails into me again. Damn, ow. Please, please, let me go, please. Come on, let me go. Let me go. I whisper that, not thinking about it. My eyes are shut, I'm kissed, scared. I don't want to get stuck in there. I can feel her looking at me and I breathe faster. I'm trying to be calm. I can feel my lips moving, pleading. After a while, real slow, she does it. I open my eyes, shocked. She looks let go of my hand and holding hers up now where mine was. As she's about to drop it, I toughen up and grab it again. We make eye contact. Believe in me, got it? She doesn't say anything. I let go of her hand and pick up my satchel from inside her space. We hold a look. I beg you, don't betray me. Please, I won't betray you, I promise. The whales don't shake, my voice don't boom. I take a step back in another one, I run out of there. Oh, yes, finally. About time. It's cold now, I'm actually shivering. The moon's high, the grass is glowing, it's dark, but beautiful. It's quiet, like before, like always, right? It's just wind and dead leaves. Even animals don't walk through this place. I wonder how long it's been since people did. At least, this is probably the first time someone's walked through here with a sapling in their hand. Wait, he's back? I step into the big room and look out ahead. I rub my thumb over a branch of a tree I'm carrying. I can see her there on the floor, her hands over her face. I know she can hear me, since whenever I move in, a little of her ears flick. I walk forward. Wiping her nose with the back of her hand, she stands up and breathes out loudly. She opens her eyes, and I'm kind of surprised when I see them glowing. Stop at the edge of the barrier. She looks at me. You look a mess. Yeah, well, my belly growls and I sniff. It's pretty hard to dig out a tree properly with real tools, especially one like this. Well, that's a nice tree. We both check out the sapling. Isn't that? Uh, yep. An olive sapling. I didn't pick it since I wanted to make fun of you. Olive trees are strong. If there's anything that's going to take root and dirt like this, it's an olive. Right. I don't like olives. I don't like him. Step back, I'm coming in. Just like that after a second or two, and I walk into her place. Bending down, I pull the olive up to her. Take it. She does that too after thinking about it. I take a sharp rock out of my pocket that I picked up outside and stab into the ground with it cracking the floor. It sticks pretty bad in here, but I still I can't yank it out. I do that and keep breathing up here. I can feel the lady staring and know what she's thinking. Even if I'm a kid, I can still see the soil is pretty bad. My eyes are as good as Ma's, at least. And this lady definitely knows as good as me how far, how, I can't read English, good as me how it is for growing. If anything grows, it'll be with awful chances. Seriously, and all is about the only thing around that might. Making matters worse, I ain't got very long with that sapling as good as dead. The roots are good and all, but it's not, honestly, I don't know the difference from a good sapling for a bad one. I sort of just went with my gut. So knowing most of that, she's probably thinking of just walking out. That's what's got to happen, right? Two living beings get in and only one gets out. <clears throat> but I'm not going to check on her and see if she leaves. It's not that I'm trusting her. I can't trust her, but this is all about all I can think of. Getting her out without leaving me. And I mean, if I look at her and show her that I'm worried, that'd mess everything up. So I've got to keep at it. I've got to break up the spot. I stab and pull and I dig, clearing with stones and dirt and pile up the dirt next to me, gonna need it later. But as it is, after a lot of effort, lean back and look at the hole I made. Then slow, I turn and she sees she's still there. And she is, holding up my hand. I hold up my hand, she gives me the olive. I take it and open up my satchel, filled with wet, healthy soil I gathered while I was gone. I carefully transplant the sapling, putting some good soil over its roots and filling the hole back up with a proper mix of my collector stuff and the dirt from the foundation. Careful now, 
careful of the roots. Okay, they should be good. I take my canteen from the clip of my waist and open it up. This is filled with spring water. Took a while to find that. Honestly, it took me a while to do everything. I kind of feel bad about it, but I moved as fast as I could. Anyway, there should be enough here for a healthy first watering. You won't drown it. I pour the insides of the bottle over the leaves and plot, screwing it closed when I'm done and putting it back on my waist. That's it. That's it? That's all? I stand up, wiping the sweat away from my brow. Yeah. We both look aside to circle for a while. I give her a look from my side. She's still looking out. Breathe. Okay. Step forward. She doesn't move. I leave her side and turn around. We both stare at the olive tree. Did it work? I open my mouth to ask her to close it again when I see her. She's scared. She's at the edge of the barrier and scared. Oh man, I just realized. I'm just touching it before it hurt so much. How did it feel when she pushed her whole hand through? She had a stone face when she did it, but God, I can't say anything to that. I do know what it feels like. Man. Seeing her like that, shaking with fear and panicking, just thinking about moving ahead. I can feel my eyes welling up. I just try not to cry for her. She loosens up her shoulders and puts her hand up her chest. Here we go. What? Her foot passes over the line. I didn't want to see that pain anymore. She jerks her other foot forward, completely leaving the spot. It, she steps again, faltering, and again, she walks to me. She lowers herself and... Yeah, she's free. Oh, that's awesome. I wrap my arms around her. Her skin warms up all over and she nuzzles her face affectionately into my neck, rubs her nose over my cheek. She just eases into me, weak. I bring up one of my hands and pet her head. I'm crying. It's okay now, I choke. It's okay, right? She just rests on me, taking away any of the nipping cold in my body. She breathes out past my ear. Thank you. I hug her a little closer. I'm sorry. I shake my head, trying not to break down. Can I just say like this for a little bit? You're familiar. You're strong. You, yeah. Yeah, you can. She brushes her nose on me again, whispering something. I can't hear what it is. She holds me tightly and so anything. We don't say anything else. Oh, that's so sweet. You're a surprisingly emotional lad. Are all lads like that now? She's just really hurt looking at you, that's all. Right, right. I'm sure that I did, really. I was quite emotional myself. If Mother saw me like that, I wonder if Mother's still alive. When did I at least last see this place from here? Has it really been forgotten? Yeah, I'd never heard of it. That's a good thing. I think that's a good thing. What was it like here? Did you like it? It was normal, extraordinary normal. So normal, in fact, that I had to file down my horns just to get around. What about your ears? My ears? What about them? You didn't have to hide them. No, I didn't have to. I only looked fiendish with just my ears, like an unfortunate halfling. It little bothered anyone before. If it did, I'd grow my hair long. Huh. As I was saying, this town, I might have liked it once. Though I, when I first came here, I never would have expected to stay. Ah, yes. The boy was lost, wasn't the... You've got any idea how to get back to your home? Uh, obviously not. Don't get smart, I'll help you there. Really? I can't assure you when we'll find it, but I'll show you that we shall for certes. I'll take you there. I may as well. You're not gonna go travel? I chuckle. This should be enough of a journey after standing so long. Hmm. We'll camp by the eastward... Excuse me for my spit. We'll, buy, we'll camp by the Easter, eastward spring for the night. You know the one east? It's still there. Yep, at least, at least it's probably the same one I'm thinking of. Can you fish at all? No, without a rod, no. And I'll fish for you, but you'll have to prepare it. Can't do everything for you. Hmm. What time is it? You ask me the time? Sorry, I just I'm so out of it. Since I leaned on you earlier, you can lay on me while you sleep. Ah, that's cute. I'll keep you warm. Ah. He glances at me briefly and looks pensive. He shuts his eyes. I'll do that. He opens them again, keeping the stare from me. Thank you. I smirk at him. Mm -mm. What should I even think? I thought this wouldn't happen. Huh? Am I actually asleep, dreaming? If you are, that'd be weird for me. I'm glad you stayed. I laugh. I'm glad you were a fool. Hmm. Really, I am. I can't say it enough. 
It's all right. Don't consort with any fiends other than me. Got it. I honestly feel like this isn't real, but I know that it is. Let's go, then. My mind has become so lucid since I've been freed. Bright. So bright that it nearly blinds me, but I can tell. I... I'm happy. Yes! Ha! <laughs> oh, that was awesome! I loved it! That's a good story. Is this the end? Yep, this seems like the end. That was a pretty damn good story. Nope, it's not the end. <laughs> Sorry. The sun shines a different way now, different from all the ways I've seen it before. I thought I'd seen them all, but this one's different, much more different and pleasant. Watching him come this morning with him resting on my chest was profoundly serene. Having him calmly there through the moonlight made it better than any other time. And now, I'm more brimming with life, that's where I'm going to guide him, free of charge. And after that, who can say? The world's changed. I greatly changed. It doesn't feel at all the same. My friends have died, I can tell they're from the air, dead, and I could not wish them farewell. My kin, too, are dead. On this path, breathing fresh from the winds, I can feel these things, and new things. Though fiends still roam, I know no one alive. No one. But this boy here. I think that by him being here, there is company. I want to keep with him, if only if even from afar. I want for his life to go well. And as for mine, when he's gone, I think that I'll go too. Perhaps it's not just the best use of the time he returned to me, but I am tired. I'm tired, but I can stay awake a little longer. Okay. I'm pressing control, it's not allowing me to skip. Okay, whatever. Uh, that's the credits. So that was Juniper's Knot. I really like that. And also, I'm gonna have to put a warning in it. Pardon me for the language, but there were some bad words in here, so I do apologize. And with that, this is the end of the game. I really enjoyed that. I want to know what you guys thought, so please let me know in the comments. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys say. Um, thank you guys so much for going on this journey with me. I loved it. And thank you guys so much for watching. And like always, I will catch you all in the next video. Stay awesome. Bye.